All right guys, today I'm gonna to show you how to build a pattern for a six inch Atlas compound slide. So let's get to it. All right, everybody, welcome back to the old iron shop. All right, so I'm gonna recycle some of my scrap. This was uh, part of this, this, you know, this T-shaped piece, right? So I took it and I planed off one of the, one of the sides of the T. That will uh, fit pretty good right there because we're gonna have to build up this machine surface and give it an allowance for machining back. I kind of roughly marked off what I'm gonna have to cut off there. But uh, I wanna kind of chamfer this and round it a little bit and then I gotta, I gotta do something about this. Really, this all just needs to be a little bit of an angle, I suppose, probably, but see what we can accomplish with a plane. Okay, I, I was thinking about trying to use a hand plane here, but uh, I think there's not really, I mean, this is a pretty small bit, so I think I'm just going to shape this with a chisel, I think. It's kind of wanting to split on me like that, <laughs> but that's okay as long as we keep it under control. Show you another little trick for working with small parts here. Yeah, that's in the camera still. So what you can do, I've got my bench dog here and it's only up just a little tiny bit, not much at all. I can use that to push against, we call it a planing stop. This is a little awkward because this part is tapered so it wants to, wants to slide off that direction. One more and it should have that little mark off of there. There we go, see? And we got a nice little thin taper part. Plenty of draft. So you can, this is actually a pretty good illustration. So if this part needs to come out, and remember, the other side's gonna have some taper on it too. But you'll be able to pull out, as soon as it comes down a little bit, there'll be room all the way around the part. That makes it a lot easier if it, if it was parallel, it would be dragging on the sand all the way up and the chance of, you know, keeping the sides looking pristine is pretty much impossible. Well, this is where those uh, leather line jaws really come in handy because that thing has uh, got quite a lot of draft on it, so it would be a little bit hard to hold if you had solid jaws. All right, I think that'll work pretty good. All right, we're gonna use our planing stop technique here to, to plane this piece here flat. And this is kind of a funky setup. I don't really wanna, you know, these things are hanging out there a long way. If you put pressure on that, you could split it pretty easy. So I thought, well, I can slide it into the body of this, this thing here. That'll work pretty good. And then I can put it up against the uh, dog. That'll make a decent stop. But uh, because we have this cutout right here, it'll want to tip. So I'll stick this thing in there. And this is that little wedge piece that I, I cut to go on the back end over here. But that seems to, that's pretty solid. I think that's going to go nowhere. We're all supported by the casting. So let's give it a swipe or two and see what happens. And I got to plane these outside ones down a little bit first there. They're proud of the rest of the part. They're working real good. Okay, so I, I knifed a line across here. I'm pretty sure it's not showing up on the on the video, but I'm gonna 
very carefully I'm going to cut right to that line. This is a really fine crosscut saw, 16 points per inch. The Nielsen saw, by the way, this is one of my favorite saws. So I'm going to cut down just shy of this and we'll clean it up probably with a chisel. It's always good to knife in those lines. Now I'm just going to use the very tip of the saw to try to cut down where it's flush, but I don't want to cut all the way across. And if it gets undercut here a little bit, that's not a big deal. I've switched out to a, uh, a dovetail saw. So this is filed for rip cutting. So I'm going to cut most of this waste out. And I did accidentally nick it a little bit right there, but that's okay. It's not a problem. There we go. So we got a little bit of extra wood here, but we'll pair that out with the chisel. All right, that looks pretty decent in there. Let's see how deep this, this little recess is here. It's a, just a little bit over two and seven eighths. So we'll see, it's gonna be on this side here. So we're gonna go a little bit less than that right now. Grab a square. All right. <clears throat> One of my shop built squares. Quilted mahogany, or uh, excuse me, quilted maple and mahogany. And this came out of uh, this mahogany here is a little bit left over from the cradle I built for my, my friend's son. And then when we were going to have kids, he gave it back to me. So now there's been, been four kids grow up sleeping in that cradle. I think I need to go and put everybody's name on it that's been in it. Sort of uh, mark its history on there. That'll be important, I think, to people in the future. I should show it to you guys sometime. It's, it's really pretty. It's got compound minor dovetails around the outside of it. That was... Uh, very challenging for our first uh, dovetailing project. All right, so I'm going to stay in board of my line just a, a little bit here. I'll do that on both sides. So that is more or less where our slot needs to go. All right, so we're going to cope out our hole, and I'm going to. Just start with a little pilot. Whoop. You gotta get that saw blade in there somehow. Now they call this gizmo here a bird's mouth. And it's meant for doing just this sort of work, fret work, uh, sawing through openings with a coping saw and whatnot. Um, this is pretty handy. So the idea is that you can keep your saw sort of back in here where it's, you know, all the wood is well supported or as big as the board needs to be, you know. And it'll allow you to fall along that line. All right, well, let's saw this out. So I really don't have a super great way of marking out where the inside of this is because, of course, you know, I can take it, fit it up into the, uh, into the casting here. Okay, come on. There we go. The only way I can really tell is 
can line it up and then I can look in here and I can see well I still got a little bit here you know a little bit there quite a bit still at the very bottom uh, but I have to just kind of it's got to be just filed to fit there's no other good way of doing this really and I got to remember that I got to have a little bit of draft because there's going to be a sand core left hanging coming out of this opening so I'll just use my Lee Nielsen pattern makers rasp here just kind of work it down just keep going here So we've got this fit pretty well where there's no lip and if there is any lip it's on the, the iron part that would be okay because there's definitely going to be draft already on that. Um, only thing I didn't work on yet is right here and I want to wait until I get you know this back piece here attached like that and then that will make that a lot stronger because right now that's a, yeah, it's a little fragile. So I wouldn't want to start filing on it and break it. All right, the next thing I'm going to do right here, I've kind of got a little bit of an undercut in the pattern. This this wood here needs to be smoothed flush to this. And in fact, we'll have to apply draft to the inside of this, but I'll have to break out some of the carving tools and just kind of clean this up. See how that fits up now. That'll work fine. All right, so now this surface in here, when they're, they're gonna have to mill away the end of this part once it's cast. So this face right here, gonna have to have a little bit of draft come back this way. That's probably enough. So, we're going to have to get in here with some carving tools again and sort of carve this back a little bit. Right, I have a gouge here that's pretty flat. I'm not sure exactly what the radius of that, that, that gouge is there, but it's the skinniest, flattest one I have. And I'm going to try to carve in this draft here. This is kind of a hard part to work. What I should have done, I should have left this long, then I could have clamped it in the vise held it that way it would have been a better idea but hey just remember that for next time learn from my mistakes right guys okay find a little straight edge here have a look at that seems like we're tapering pretty pretty all right and this is Kind of a weird shape it's going to have to be sort of a you can imagine like this needs to be scooped out like a cone almost or something like that it's gonna be a little bit wider radius here than it would be down there but these are all really small numbers we're thinking about Well, the light is terrible for you, but hopefully you can see. That's all seems to be blending in pretty well. We'll have the angle so the little sand core that's going to be left in here will not get damaged, hopefully, as we pull the, pull the pattern out of the mold. All right, we're going to cut this little infill for the T-slot. All right. Let's see how this fits in there now.
until the humidity is up, this piece is quite a bit tighter than it was yesterday. All right, so that seems to fit in there pretty good. It's just a hair proud. Well, again, once we get done, we'll sand all this smooth, and then probably going to be a little bit of filling work have to happen here on the side, definitely where all these holes are. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I'm going to go in here with this uh, little pointed stone, and I'm going to just kind of smooth off all the high points of this, uh, this casting texture. It's not necessary to smooth it where it's all down perfect. Um, I'm going to use a filling primer and probably sand it also, and that'll smooth it all out where it's really nice and flat. We just want to get the high points off. So you can see there's, uh, you can still see some of the texture there, but there's no more little bits of metal sticking up above the surface anymore. It's, it's relatively flat, smooth. Uh, you know, there is a little bit of texture still, but like I said, that's going to get filled. So that's not a problem. If you guys enjoyed seeing these patterns get built, please click on the horizontal mill icon here, get yourself subscribed and make sure to come back for the next episode. We'll see you guys around.